All right, party people. This thing is a stereo preamp from Vacuum Tube Audio. I think that's the actually the name of the business. I I think from talking to the guy who owns it. But anyway, um, this is like a do-it-yourself kit, um, kind of like Dynacos or whatever, you know, where you can make your own uh, stereo thing. And uh, he built this kit, and one of the two channels hums, and he said he was ready to send it to... Nevada, I think is where the manufacturer was. They're going to send it to Nevada. And then found out that there's some guy locally who works on tube equipment. So it ended up here. So this is a do-it-yourself kit. I don't know what we're going to find inside, but I suppose we got to take the lid off. Okay, so we're in and taking a look around. Um, <clears throat> there's a few things that, you know, concern me a little bit. The vendor of these is tubesforhifi.com. Um, it doesn't look like dude did a horrid job assembling this. Um, it's not, you know, it could be better, it could be a lot worse, let's just put it that way. Um... I think this is, I have to look at what model this is, but I think it was maybe SP14 or SP12 or something, but, um, yeah, SP14VE, so I'll have to look that board up. So the first thing I found, just on Hi-Fi, I wanted to make sure that our, you know, this is supposed to be lifted from our chassis, so I wanted to make sure it was, and it is. And then if I check our chassis, I can walk through on all of these, and I'll get a beep on every one of them. Except that one, because Buddy forgot to solder the ground. Oops. So I'll fix that. And then we'll come over here and do these. So, at this point, I, I don't know why it was humming, but a missing ground on the port that is for the right channel of the tuner had a floating ground. So that means an input for the tuner probably wouldn't work right. Um, the other thing that seems a little disconcerting to me is the outputs here. I, they just don't look right. There's two outputs. There's an out one and two here. Um, only one of the two is hooked up, which is which is okay, but the way that these are laid out here on the board looks a little, um, a little, a little con confusing to me, um, you know. But we'll figure it out. So let me solder that ground, and then um, I'll try to pull a little bit more information on this. Okay, so. This is the channel, the, these are labeled out one, out two, but this would be the left out just based on the board. The board says left out, and this is a wire. So left out, if you look on my little pocket scope here, um, we're searching for like five millivolts, and there's really not much noise there. But if I come over to the right channel, there's significantly more, okay? So the right channel would be humming. But... From the left channel, I see two wires coming in, like the right channel is referenced to ground, but I don't see that the left channel is referenced to ground. So, it looks like the wire that would reference it to ground might be missing. Um, yeah, that would, that would explain some noise. We'll see if that gets us anywhere. Okay. So, this is a A440 reference pitch. Like I say, all I found was A, 
a missing ground on the tuner input on the back. That's all we found. That's an A440 on the scope. Looks pretty good to me. And that's one channel and that's the other channel. They look balanced. It looks clean. I mean granted this is, you know, my little rubbish scope, but I'm not seeing where the problem is. Give the tubies a tap here. Nothing interesting happens. Let's try the other one here. That's a rectifier tube. Rectifier tube isn't going to cause any bouncies. Get on our signal there. Um, this looks okay. So I guess the only thing left to do is try to listen to it, I suppose. Alrighty. Was that all it was? Was one missing ground on the tuner? Why would that cause that much buzz, though? That doesn't make any sense. Let's snap over to the tuner input just for fun. Let's move our signal over there. Let's see if that did anything. I mean, I know when you got any kind of ground running around in here, weird things are going to happen. The other thing that's kind of aggravating is there's a lot of loose screws on this thing. I mean, like, a lot. So we're going to tighten a lot of screws. Okay, so now we're on the tuner input, which is the one that had a problem before. There's one channel. There's the other channel. That looks good. I'm getting... You know... I can turn it up till well, the scope can't handle it anymore. Let's see, that's uh, got to adjust our voltage, right? Half a volt, there we go. So this outputs like a half a volt per meter. So if we go, what, peak to peak on this, let's go to what's the maximum output with on my phone? We're at one volt per division, so we're like at 2.2. 2. 1 2.2 volts seems like pretty good output I don't I mean I, I would think I would see a lot of noise here and I, I'm just not so I guess we plug it into the stereo and see what it does okay so I'm just playing a reference pitch here and I've got it plugged into my kit tube amp up here which, admittedly, there's a little bit of a noise floor on that tube amp. I can probably tweak it and quiet it just a little more. But it's really, the noise floor is really low. And I get no additional noise from this. I mean, like, zero. So, I think we're cool. The errors I found is I found a missing ground on the back input jacks there. And then this source versus tape input switch was backwards. And why did I just lose volume? Is that my... Why, why did I lose volume? That's weird. What's going on? Standby. Okay, we're fine. That's just my, my brain playing tricks on me. And some when you're playing the same pitch, you have this, you know, phenomenon of comb filtering and everything else. And when I crouch down to do the filming, the volume level changed just due to reflections in the room. How weird. So I suppose the only thing left to do is maybe test the phono stage and see if that buzzes and hums. Okay, so I don't know what I was smoking. Um, I'm working without a schematic, so forbid my or forgive my stupid. Um, this has a phono input, but essentially all of the inputs come up here to this switch. So this is just a standard preamp. It doesn't have RIAA and all that other phono stuff in it. So. Um, I hooked it up to my Fano preamp up there, and um, yeah, it's fine. So, uh, you know, I don't get any additional noise from this preamp than I do from my, you know, power amp up there. My power amp's the only one producing noise floor, and it's it's a little bit, but it's not much. So, uh, I think we're cool. <laughs> I I almost you know I'm I'm a little dumbfounded that it was that not complicated but you know sometimes stuff happens all right thanks for watching have a great day